Beautiful. Great. Okay, so let's take off and let's jump in. I try to um, give you some insight on Tailwind CSS, what I got in the recent month when I first started with it, and yeah, why I did consider even doing Tailwind after doing Bootstrap for around, I think, the last 100 years, of, uh, my feeling. So uh, last 10 years, maybe we did Bootstrap 3, 4, and in between, we tried some own grid system stuff. We tried foundation. And yeah, they all were pretty good. And you maybe all know these different front end frameworks, what they're doing, how they work. And yeah. And then an employee came along and told me about Tailwind. And I thought about, yeah, it's another technology. Maybe we can miss it, stay with Bootstrap. It's easy, we know, and so on. Yeah, but then when I gave it a go, um, it completely changed the view on how CSS could be built or how you can build front ends in general. And so I spun up a, a little project just to try it out. And in the beginning, yeah, it was kind of weird. I will show you later why. And But very quickly, I, I realized that there are a lot of benefits in it. And I will go, go through this with you as well. And I try to do today something to spin up something as quickly as possible to see where the speed is in Tailwind and where. So you can also figure out when I'm doing this, if this maybe uh, also pain points you're facing and you could maybe solve these things on your own. For me, as a business owner, speed is crucial. So the faster we are, the better it is. Because as a service business, you look at time and and how you can make out the most of your time. So Tailwind is a good addition in our toolkit to facilitate this, let's say. Yeah, so I dive in and let's see what we do today. Um, we do today, what, what is Tailwind? How do you use it? We build a quick app promo landing page uh, out of Tailwind blocks. Um, then we look at Tailwind and Drupal, how this applies there. And then we'll take a look at the benefits and maybe make a discussion about it. So Vladimir told me we have 30 minutes, so we, I have to uh, be quick. So let's look what Tailwind is. So Tailwind is a utility-first framework, a CSS framework, which um, basically has some resemblance with Bootstrap at some points, but uh, goes a different way. There are no styles from the beginning. It gets you out of your way, and you can do pretty much anything it, uh, with it. Um, what I recommend, and what I try to do today, I will show you how you use it, and you can look up all the functions and properties yourself in the docs because the docs are really brilliant. And it doesn't make sense that I show you another docs because they're online anyway. I try to to avoid that and try to get hands on. So just one thing out of the docs to give you an idea. This is a pretty classical approach. The screenshot is from the docs of Tailwind. So you see you got your markup, chat notification, logo proper, and everything. And then there is a style sheet next to it. It can be SAS, it can be uh, vanilla CSS, and it lies typically in some files on your installation. The utility first approach um, on Tailwind looks like this. You got no CSS anymore, which is pretty radical in the beginning, but it's it, it just works. So what you see here is exactly the same like before, but the classes of Tailwind do the, all the styling and all the, all the things needed. So we will see a little bit later on how this works. I just, to get an idea what's the, difference in coding. So you've seen the classes. This is a, I cite this from the docs of, of Tailwind. This is an atrocity, what a horrible mess. If you look at the classes, how they add up, and you come from maybe classic CSS bootstrap styling. In bootstrap, there are some utility classes. But if you do uh, regular CSS, it's horrible in the beginning. Yeah, horrible to look at, I think. That was my first impression also when I used it first. And I said, no, this can't work. Doesn't work so out. But as mentioned in bold, you have to actually try it to, to see. So I would like to try to convince you to give it a try. 
to see if it works for you. I definitely think it will work for many approaches. Good. Here's a blog post I found uh, during my research from Block81. I think it's a web designer in, in, the, in America. And he blogged on the July 8th why I haven't jumped on the Tailwind bandwagon. And he stated his reasons why he didn't. And I think a year later, he said, all aboard the Tailwind bandwagon, because he was also uh, quite skeptical in the beginning, like me. And yeah, he did the jump, and he never looks back. Think, uh, uh, he never looks back then. So uh, same with me. We, we converted every new installation comes with Tailwind out of the box, no bootstrap anymore in our agency. We work now 15 years, and we did a lot of bootstrap. There's some legacy code, which we still have. Um, but yeah, we don't do any bootstrap anymore. It just uh, tailwind outweighs the the benefits are much much more. Good. Let's get messy. So what I try to do now with you is we do a, a quick app promo landing page with a main menu, a hero, just some benefits of our app, a pricing table, testimonials, a quick API teaser. Um, and the download button and the footer. Just to give you a, an idea how quickly we can spin up Tailwind with Tailwind components and how we can then edit these things. What I'm using is uh, Visual Studio Code. Then uh, Laravel Wallet I've installed, but for this demo, you don't need to use it. Uh, you can use it without it. If you don't want to see the production uh, code, you can use the internal a web server which is provided by Tailwind Playground. I use Tailwind blocks for the layouts. Um, some unsplash images I will put in. Um, then one Tailwind component. And we build one quick component to see how you can use a component. That's what I try to do with you. Just to quickly follow through how this works. OK. Um, I keep this on. Let's dive in to our project. So I got here an empty folder. And what we do, we, we get now, I copy pasted out my the setup. I'll show you in the slide what's the setup look like from my demo. We clone the Tailwind Playground. We install it with NPM, and we serve up the Tailwind server. That's about it to get an up and running set setup for a Tailwind installation to, to do a simple templating so that we, do, we now do. So where we are here. So what I do now is I clone the repo. We see now here our, our Tailwind installation, and our Tailwind toolkit. Now we can install. This is quite quick, so should be done in a second. Anyone has any questions, please just stop me and ask if, if I'm too fast or something is not hearable properly. So, OK, so now we do npm serve and run serve. There it is. So, and now we get, oh, that was me. Here it is. You see, now we got our first Tailwind project. So this now is the index HTML file um, based and done via Tailwind. And I show you how it looks. In the public folder, we now got an index HTML. And this is the code we got. This is basically. Tailwind classes, like here, relative means position relative as a utility class, and all the other stuff we need. What I now do quickly, I remove everything between the body. 
and then we build up our site here. If you are safe, you see it's auto reloading, so it's it's pretty neat this thing because you can very quickly um, spin up some some stuff. Good. So let's go. We have now the following to do. We do. We use Tailwind blocks now to get up our site running. I don't know if you know Tailwind blocks you stumbled upon. Tailwind blocks are components which are already made and open source. I built our Drupal template also with it, so I thought I'd show you this one in this quick demo, and then we see how this works in, in Drupal. Let's get a menu. So we need a main menu. This is somewhere here as a header. I take this one and I want to have it dark. So I copy it and put my header in here. I save, let's look what happens. Bam, we got a header. So we need a hero. We do a light hero. So let's take a hero, this one. So I put in a hero here, and yes, there you see, we got a hero on our installation. Uh, I quickly follow up this until we got a proper website. So we need some steps to follow. Let's say we do these steps. Few code, copy. And we do some pressing, cut. We got a beautiful pricing then for our app landing page. And we do. Um, yeah, let's see what we got now. OK, we got a hero. We got some steps. We got a pricing. And now we would like to have a different component. Let's say we want to advertise our API. And there is no component in this thing, so I use this one. I go now out to a different component repository. This is called tailwindcomponents.com. And I like to have this style of this terminal thingy here. So I copy this code and also take it with me. Put it in here. So let's see what happens if I use this. We got the little terminal down there. And we can use, let's say here, a div. We say container and so we, we give him a headline. Page one, we say our API. And let's see if we save. We get here a little headline. So you see there is no styling on it yet. This we do with Tailwind classes. To use this, I, I it's like this, we just use class, then there are text classes. I installed in Cloud Code, I installed Tailwind IntelliSense, so it gives me all these suggestions. And I want I want to have it big, so let's say 5XL, I want to have a way text. I want to have it, let's say, green. Uh, it's green and the color of 500 is the middle green. And I want to have it centered. So let's save this. See what happens. Ah, uh, here is a typo. There it is. You see, we got it here. So, and there you go. We need a a margin on the bottom of let's say 10 and on the top you can do margin bottom top same with classes this is similar to bootstrap actually you see now we got some margin and we got a nice nearly nice looking headline to end to round this up to see how quickly this goes we put in some footer from the tail box again let's put some footer in there where are they? They are here. Use this one in a dark mode. And here we go. So. 
should have some padding to the top. Let me do this quickly. In. Yeah. So, pretty much uh, a website um, layout which should, could be could you easily use for let's say a quick landing page or something. It took us now I think roughly five minutes to spin this up. It's fully responsive. So, for for a quick front end, it's not too bad actually. Can I just um? Yes. This, uh, so I shared a couple links in the chat um, for a couple projects. Have you tried any of the componentized approaches to Tailwind? Because like the code you put in, the biggest issue with that is if you accidentally rip out one of the many nested divs and suddenly it all falls apart. Yeah. Whereas components like the view component, the last one I shared, you essentially get a single element which is like t dash card that you can pass header and you can pass some different properties and it gives you all of that markup so it's you know getting you tailwind and all the markup you need but with a single tag so have you played yeah, with any of your things um i think when you are looking at the drupal side of things you would use twig with partials and macros to do a similar thing, to put the to component to, to use components in partials, I think, to split it up a bit better. And also for smaller components, I would use the apply function of Tailwind. So let's say uh, a small class, which uh, I can show it afterwards, maybe how, how you can do a, a simple thing like a certain effect or a button style to components this as well. But yeah. I think. The approach would be to use partials in the Drupal environment. What I have now done is a quick copy paste to see um, how this works without, because we haven't done any single line of CSS yet, which means um, all the CSS is coming from the Tailwind uh, library itself, all the presentation. And this is pretty nice because I have had a lot of issues uh, over the years with different coding styles and you have to be very strict with all your employees if they're changing. Um, they all have different style and even Bootstrap you can style differently. And this, I think, is easier with Tailwind as you have the classes, you put it in and nothing can go wrong really in the CSS. And from thousand lines of codes, you're, you're, you're boiling it down to a few, a few hundred maybe or even less depending on the, on the code base. I think that's a big benefit for me yeah, um, maybe we take a look um, at a quick component through the apply function to see how this works. Or well, what you can do, let's say we go in here and use the pricing thing here, the popular one, we want to make a, a hover effect with Tailwind, which is pretty neat as well because you can use the classes to do animations and transformations. Um, I just jump in here, look for the popular phrase, go up here. Then you see this is, here it starts the first, this is the start, popular, here it is. Here we start with them. I just show you black to see. This is the one we are editing now, so I remove this. I put a white thing here. And now we say we can use transform. And transform means you enable all the transformation functionality of Tailwind. Then we say transition all, which means please transition all your effects, not only scaling or whatever. And then we say hover. And we say hover scale to 110. So I save this, and you see if I hover, it scales. Now this is not pretty nice because it just jumps. So we can add a duration to it. We say duration 500. And then you see, I hope it comes clear through screen sharing, you got a beautiful transformation animation. 
and we also can do on how I will put some shadow in 2XL, which means it's a big shadow. So if I hover, you see, you get an even nice shadow below. This would take me, I think, uh, three, five minutes in Bootstrap and a lot of CSS code and some, because it's simply not possible to do with just classes. So this is pretty neat. And what if I, I, I try now to do this as a component? So um, because copying all this stuff to all the thingy diffs I want to use it is pretty tedious. So I remove this now here. I put in here a class, let's say, hover effect. And then I go into my CSS. I make my class hover effect. And now I can say apply. And I'll have to split it up on two. One is the hover state, where I put my, my scale. Scale and my shadow. And on top, I have my transitions and my duration. So that's pretty much it. So now we take a look again. It still works, you see. And now we got a nice uh, class. It's called how effect. So we can I do it now via inspector. I can now put it in at the button. And you see, now it's reusable everywhere I need it. I can use this how effect. You can also do um, other stuff like you can add uh, on how a skew, let's say 12. So now what happens? It's, it skews as well. So you can combine also the animations and trigger them through a centralized interface. Doesn't look too, too nice here, but yeah. That's how you make quick, easy CSS components without touching any twig or any other like Vue components for smaller things. I think it's a good thing. For bigger things, you have to do proper components. And you were right on this. Um, this approach with component components should should be done on larger scales scale um, installations. So. I now jump over to Drupal because I think the concept itself is, for me, it's pretty easy. I just use all the classes that Tailwind gives me and I can basically do anything I want because this is also just classes, this little terminal. So you can design a lot with the classes. You don't need any custom CSS and everything stays within your HTML and you don't switch back and forth all the time between HTML, CSS, files. And also, when you have a big installation, normally you have source maps to even figure out where to find the class or the styling in which file it lies. And with SCSS and, and source maps on top, this can be quite, quite daunting to look if there's a big installation or sometimes they don't work properly and there's a wrong line number when you're searching. So the search effort is minimized on using Tailwind as well, which is good because, yeah, it saves time a lot. If you call the typical Tailwind front end, you are constantly in HTML and not switching back and forth between CSS and HTML. So let's take a look where we are now. So we built the component. We used some uh, components from the web. Uh, I didn't use the Unsplash image API. It just takes images in from Unsplash to, uh, i show you quickly. This is quite nice to get it. For, a, let's say you do a, a dummy for a client, you can use this because here there is dummy image in there and this doesn't look nice. So unsplash.com, then you have the size and then you put your keyword next to it. Let's say we have an app promo, so I put app. And what happens is it gets random images with the keyword app. So every time you reload, you get a different images, image from Unsplash, which is pretty neat because you then quickly 
get a feeling how the design works because with all these placeholders, it's pretty hard to guess how it really looks like. But with Unsplash, it's really nice to do. So look here also to get an idea. Another one we say this is not that this is a tablet we need and it's the refresh. Yeah, to get an idea. You get some images in there and it looks much more nice the, the quick prototype than before. This is about Unsplash. Good. This is what I used now, Laraval Wallet. I would use now everything runs through the through the uh, npm run surf, um, which is bundled with the Tailwind Playground. But you can now stop this, and we can take a look at. You go into the public folder. First, we compile npm run production. Now, all the assets we have here in Tailwind is is compiled then into CSS. And you can then run valid link demo. And now I got a link for this um, demo test. And now it is the compiled version we got here. Of, and we can take a look at the network panel to see how what we got on the size. This is now. Our CSS for the whole site is 3.9 kilobyte. It's just CSS Nano, I think, runs over it. And I have seen that this playground doesn't use Perch CSS, which would even decrease the size of the whole CSS we are having in there. It brings it down a little bit more, I think. But there's is more setup to do than, than with the quick, easy Git repository, but I think for KB, for the whole thing we got here, is pretty neat with all the stuff we, we have and it's responsive, it does what we need. Yeah. Good. So now we switch over to how this works in Drupal. I got our own website here as a test on my local machine. And I walk you quickly through the theme we did. We use here a custom theme we built on our own. It's called RMTV. Um, we are using Webpack to compile SCSS from the source folder to the public. And we use um, we use Tailwind to, for the front end. And we use Perch CSS. This is the thing where it, you can specify in the Webpack file that you run over these folders here. There's globbing enabled, so it search for all HTML tweak and all tweak files, which it finds. And it looks if there are things, there are classes not used. And if they are not used, they get approached from the CSS to make this file size smaller. This is cr pretty good because the whole tailwind is about 2.5 megabytes. And then it stripes it down to all the classes you have used, but nothing else. One bit of warning for this. Um, if you use dynamic classes via JavaScript, you have to make sure to put them into a separate, um, separate markup so that they still stay. Otherwise, your JavaScript add class or remove class things and all dependencies don't work because the classes got purged while purging. So this you have to be aware of, otherwise it works well. So what we do is we combine the styles here, um, the SCSS, and put it together in, a, in the public folder. So this is the SCS side of things. You see here, this is my whole, here we can see quickly how it's done. We have the Tailwind imports on top. Then I got my mobile menu, my cookie banner, which I ignore because otherwise they get purged when they're loaded dynamically. And then there is Tailwind, the next it loads the utilities, and then there is some fonts I use and some styling I did add uh, like responsive video or whatever you need, you put in. 
here a little mix-in for the headlines, and my mobile menu, which I copied in from some external thing. Um, so that's why it's here. It's just simple mobile menu and the GUI headline script. That's about it, what, what's in CSS for the whole site we are having here. So it brings it down to pretty, pretty less uh, CSS. The whole site you are seeing here is just these few lines of CSS. The rest is Tailwind. All the effects are done with Tailwind. All here, like hovers. And yeah, I just jump in now to show you how we did it with the paragraphs module. The paragraphs module enables you to, to make sections for your content, let's say a headline, a teaser, some slider, then maybe a column. And you can build, here's a team section, some CTA, and these are all separate paragraphs which you can in the back end then add your content to and drag and drop. And just a quick, I just edit this site to, to show you how this is done. So in the back end, we got, I just click here to see. These are all my paragraphs. You can drag and drop them freely so you can arrange your, your contents in the back end and you can edit it through, through the editor. Here are, um, this is in the back end. I also integrated Tailwind. This is coming from 7 theme. I didn't take care of this. The line height is inherited from the 7 theme, which is wrong here. But I just wanted to uh, I reload it once to see how this works because you can even use as these components, you can even use the sliders in the back end within the paragraph preview. This was just enabled and worked out of the box which I couldn't do with Bootstrap before because there was always some things missing on the CSS so very difficult to do. With Tailwind, it was very easy to do. You see, uh, you see the markup in the back end as well. Even shrink down in the table of the paragraph module. Um, yeah, just a quick look how this works in the theming layer, which is, I think, the interesting part for developers. What we did is I made um, partials for the tail blocks. So every tail blocks I'm using, I did a partial with the code. And instead of the text, I put in my tweak. I take a smaller one to see like the headline. This is a, a little partial for the headline. There you got the styling. Here are the responsive classes on large use text seven. And um, here you see the little um, IntelliSense, which is good to see what's happening in the, in the back. On medium, it takes text six. And yeah, this is pretty neat from, from Twig itself. So you can see uh, it resembles the comments you have on the, on the theme debug thing from Drupal. I use this to see where my partials are in the code. It would be even nicer to use a macro to have it set to to switch it on and off uh, between dev and production. I didn't do it here, so but this is something we do in our other installations to to get the comments out of the HTML via switch. So we got here now one partial, and there is a paragraph. It's called headline. We've seen before. So I this is a standard paragraph um, tweak file from the paragraph module. And here we got the block. And what I do, I just include my headline tweak file with one variable. It's called headline. And there, there is then the, the information, like the, the placeholder you're getting from your data. What we did here, we tried out to do a, a wrapper module to, to uh, make this easier for us to get the data out of the database by having a, some sort of model, but you don't need to because you can also use the normal way of doing it, like you get your content in there as you would normally do from your um, displays. So this one goes into the tweak file and then you have your partial here and that's about it. So then you get your headline out in your content. 
this is this paragraph. You can inspect it quickly. The nice thing about it, here we got our paragraph headline. And inside we got our trick file. So when I now want to have a different style of this, I can quickly copy this. And let's say I do a headline two. I swap over my paragraph to the new headline and I put here a different styling. Let's say very small everything and save these two things. Refresh. There you go. You got a new you, you got a new paragraph styling. And so what I, what we did, we isolated the tail blocks into separate trick files so we can reuse them everywhere we need with includes in our um, tweak structure. And so we built all the components up from scratch. And the good thing is this code base you have here, like all these tweak things, they are pretty uh, basic, pretty easy, and you can just build, the more you build, the more you have, and with the next installation, you just copy in them, include them again, and you, you have exactly the same component ready again. And this for this, we use the tail blocks, but there are many other component libraries like Tailwind UI out there. If you once have used them in your tweak and you do it in a, in a way like this, you can reuse them all the time and put it in Git and version it or write some issues to it if there is a problem, and you can easily maintain your installation through this. Um, that's how we did it on the front end, and then I made, just out of curiosity, an admin theme, which I depended on the seven theme. The base theme was seven, and I just did one thing. I said, use the library from my global styles, which are compiled from Tailwind in my normal front end theme. And this was the only thing I did to enable Tailwind and the and to display the paragraphs in the way we see in the backend, which is pretty neat to have the nearly same experience in the backend and in the front end to see actually how it looks like in the paragraphs. Um, this is very easy. You just copy in the files from the from the theme, and then you have it in the backend as well. You don't need to do it because normally clients are fine with the normal forms and the preview you got. But on this one, I played around a bit and seen that it could work like this. It's maybe an, a different uh, approach between um, real front end editing and back end editing with styling as well. So, yes, that's about we did this. You see, all the paragraphs we used got there. They're little, there is nothing in there, just the include, and the, the, here is the gallery and the images, and then in the include, again, we got the, the gallery markup. There is then the trick logic for the loop for images, all this stuff, but apart from that, it's pretty normal. What I recommend everyone, I think you, the develop, developers knows, know already, Tweak Tweak is fabulous module for Drupal which makes it much easier to, to do things like getting images out of your data or doing responsive images or whatever. And it's, it's constantly improving, so it's always wise to keep it updated because there are a lot of functionality coming with each version. So I highly recommend to use Tweak Tweak module from Drupal. It's really good. So let's quickly go back. So I speed it through to, to use the time. Um, there's an optional thing, this NPX Tailwind CSS minus full, which is, I, I, I show you quickly what it does. Are we? On the playground, I just compile this quickly here. Sorry. So we got my little kitchen. So first we need to uh, now delete the config because this config got already um, got already compiled, so I delete it now. And I just run this with the parameter full. And now I get a new config initialized with the full um, specs of what Tailwind offers us to to adapt, 
and we can take a look in there quickly. You see now what you can set up here. You can see your, you can set up your breakpoints you're using. You can set up all your colors. There is always the base color. It's 500 and shades to it. These are these are basic shades you get with every installation. If you want to make your own, you can do this via. There is something called. That's not on here. If you look for a tailwind color generator, there is a nice one. Let's say we want to have, I don't know, we use this one, the color of this button. I put it in here and I say generate. You get a name for it and the whole color scheme. And if I copy it to the clipboard, I can use it over here. I just put it in there. And you got a new color, sorry, called hot cinnamon, which you can now use in your in your color scheme in your front end, which is very quick and very easy to do. Then you got all the spacing classes. I personally recommend to do more than this because 16 RAM sometimes is too less, so maybe put some more in there. It's just a matter of let's say 128 is 32 RAM. And then you got another spacing option. Then you can do things like EX128 for, for spacing. This all, what, I, what you see here is perfectly documented in the docs. It's very easy to learn. So no worries about it. Just dive in there. You can do everything with the config. You can extend these things and stuff. And it's very well documented, just to give you an idea what this is capable of. And the good thing is there is no need for CSS because everything you do via CSS properties, it's in there in Tailwind somewhere normally. There are some edge cases which aren't, but there are very, very little ones. Uh, what a, one of one was filter grayscale I had to add, but you find this online how to do it. It's easy. Good. Further enhancements which I could recommend is the Tailwind typography Git repository. The color shades, yeah, here they are. Um, then, then there are Tailwind builders like this one. This is just the drag and drop builder. We just say, I want that one. And we need a big hero, some CTR. And then you can download all this, what you built here as a, a HTML file and you got the whole code. The, the mileage varies depending on how good it is done. Some are bad, so you don't have any responsive proper. You have to work a bit on the components, but most of them are pretty neat, and yeah, they work quite well. Then for sure, the official Tailwind UI, there are UI components for pretty much everything, so very highly recommended, very well built, so you can get a license and then use it. And there is this uh, GitHub repository of a guy who just collects things around Tailwind, so there is everything you've seen here is in there as well. It's mind blowing. There's a lot of things in there. So there's a pretty much big ecosystem around Tailwind you can use and work with. So using Drupal thing we did. Recap, quick recap maybe, and maybe an open discussion we can do about the benefits. There are some what I would highlight. It's very, very fast to use. You've seen how quickly we can do stuff and we don't need to switch back and forth we don't need to search very easy then what's a real benefit is it is naming um, we used to do bem naming syntax in the past but it's always hard to name these things do you have to name it general no context in the naming you always scratch your head how you name this thing that it everyone knows where it is and where it goes so this is gone there it's really nice so yeah, not bloated. It's very concise and it's easy to maintain coding standards between people because you just use what's there and it works for you. The documentation is a real bliss. Um, for quick components, you can use the apply function, which is pretty nice. And it's completely responsive. All the bits and pieces, not just parts like in Bootstrap. In Bootstrap, there is some is responsive. There you have the, the, the classes with responsive features some are not but the good thing is bootstrap 5 is going into a similar direction than tailwind so there's an api for this 
um, I think Bootstrap 5 will fix this um, or maybe bridge the gap between these two things. They are pretty similar in some approaches. So the file size is really good after compiling and purging the CSS. We can also take a look at the file size of the live site quickly, just to get an idea of, uh, let's say, um, I take the same site we have here, and I look at the quick at the network panel. Let's see the size, how much we got. CSS. The whole site is 8.6, yeah, not even 20K for all the CSS. This is now minified and through Drupal um, on production. So it's 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 pretty good for all the thing we got here. The, the styling is, yeah, is uh, pretty light and reduced. So that's why it's also pretty small. Yeah, and one big thing is it's rock solid. So if you change one element, uh, the classes, it just on the element. You don't break anything else in your site. And that's really easy. And you can be quite confident when you change things, maybe a year or two years later in your installation, you still know that it will work and won't break anything. If you change a partial, it will just be there on this one thing you had changed. That's a good thing. So, questions, and what do you think? That's what I'm interested in. Uh, Roland, that was an excellent presentation. Thanks for that. Uh, my question is, well, I'm assuming you're not using Layout Builder. No, because Layout Builder is not multilingual, and that's the biggest drawback. In Austria, we always build German and English. You can't use the simple blocks in multilingual environment. Um, that was my last information, I think, nine months ago or so. So we swapped it out. We couldn't use it. So I would have thought the problem was that you don't have as much control over the templates. No, I don't think that's that's an issue, I think, with Layout Builder. It could be doable, I think, as well. But I think Layout Builder is in my way of building things a bit more than Paragraphs is. Yes, yes. That's what I, what my, my experience is with it. Yeah. Uh, what about views? If you have a view, how do you, do you then put CSS classes into the view? No, I use views templates and put the, the tailwind in there. And okay. so, so you you're doing view temp templates for the view fields or view bits and pieces as well. Yes, there is this approach, and there is another approach which my colleague is doing. He is doing using the um, he built the module with a tweak filter where you can say just um, you have the rows variable of the view output. And then he uses this with a tweak filter to get all the entities out there and render it through this to get the values out of the view. This works for 80, 90% of the time. If you're using commerce, um, I've seen there is an issue. If you don't go through the fields, the price resolvers do not fire. So you just get the values, which is bad because yep. I don't want that. that. That's an issue you have to look at if you're doing it directly via the values, which is maybe not best practice in a total world, but for simple things, it's it's pretty fast to get just the entity, get out the value into a twig variable, and then use it in your templates. And could you show me the uh, uh, display modes for on your website? So sure, we can take a look. I don't use a lot of displays there. I think let's use the. So let's see what I did. We have here, let's say, I use just paragraphs here, which I stick from, from top to bottom. So, and I don't use any display modes on the paragraph itself. I could, but I don't do. Basically, I don't use this at all here because I just get my values into my tweak file. And then I don't need to click around in the GUI and I'm much faster in templating. Having said that, we can use display modes as well. Wouldn't be a big deal. 
but what we have seen on smaller installations, you have a fragmented uh, twig system then. You have all these small little pieces lying around, field templates, fuse templates, which makes it hard to get an overview. And that's why we, we don't use a lot of displays anymore. Hey, Roland. So your uh, sort of practice would be to override all the tweaks that you, you have to include all the, uh, all the styles that you need. Is that sort of the um, idea? I, the idea is I just, oh, run on this one. Let's see. Just. Or do those uh, tweak templates come from the theme? So the, the paragraph itself um, is, is for yeah, the Yeah, so theme. those are your cut. Entity, yeah. yeah. And so I got my paragraph template. Mm -hmm. And from there on, I just include my tweak. I could put the tweak directly in there as well, yeah? wouldn't be an issue, but now I got it separated and my goal is to have the tail blocks ready for another installation and maybe other components like Tailwind UI in the future. And then I just swap it over here. There is no need. So it can be, yeah, so it can become like a separate theming project or? Yeah. Right, separate from, from the Drupal template itself. You, I, what I even did is I used Symfony and put in these Twig templates into a small Symfony installation where I just use Twig and use them there because they are not Drupal dependent anymore in this setup because this is just yep, Twig. Yep. So you can use Symfony with it if you like to. Mm -hmm. That's the but do, do you, yeah, so do, do you compose and install them or do you just like, how do you include them in a brand new project? Hey Alex, best of luck. Um, fun at the, the latest installation we have, we have it in a, um, in a Git repository and use it via Composer. So we, we okay. package them yeah. and put them so in it's... there. So mm -hmm. should be pretty quick then just to, to fire up the installation. Yeah, okay. So it's kind of a separate library yeah. sort of thing. Exactly. Okay, cool. You can mm -hmm. separate it and install it via Composer, if you like to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cheers. So, Could you show us what's in your node folder, please? In the node folder? Yeah, sure. There is a node article tweak, which includes just a few things. Okay, so you're not you're not doing a lot of entity templates. You just, all the action happens in the para with paragraphs. Exactly, yes, because um, all the content lies in the paragraphs and not in the node itself. The node is just a container for the paragraphs. Therefore, um, here is the view portfolio. We just, uh, there is a single article I, in, in, I get in and here I, need, I use the node get function to get the, the body of the node. This is just um, how I, I did it there. This depends on the project you're doing. And frankly, this is our own website. I'm a little more open to, to hack it a, a bit more than on the standard Drupal thing, which I supply for the client. Let's say this was also a more exploratory thing to do and try out what works and what doesn't. So. Yeah, that's great. So just it, here is some rend entities. This is just um, I, I load the rendered entities. This is the, the team. These are profile pictures or is a content type team. And I just get the entities through a little function in there and rend it out. It's pretty easy. So there is no bloated code anywhere anymore in these templates. And that's how I used it there. And every single thing is a paragraph. Here are the fuse template. There is you see there is nothing left. This is just to have it, a container around it. This is for the portfolio. Mm. It's pretty, pretty striped down and simple. There is no field template. There's no layout, nothing. Yes, sure, please, go ahead. Any questions? I don't hear any. Maybe. It's
uh, with this library, are you going to release the library for public usage, the twigs layouts? Um, as they are just um, copied in from the Tailwind blocks you sh you've seen earlier, um, it doesn't make a lot of sense because you can do this uh, in an hour time. You get you got them. I just changed the sizes a bit, but apart from that, I quickly show you. There are these tail blocks. They are open source anyway. And if you see CTA for sh for instance, where are they? Here is CTA one, and I got my CTA one here, which is pretty much the same. Let's say. Mm -hmm. So that's what uh, it does make a lot of sense because the, uh, the the one project did all the heavy lifting and I just put in my placeholders. That's what I, what yep. I did. If I want a new CTA, maybe CTA two, I use this one and put it in here into my library and then maybe for the for the sign up form I would use a let's say web form block and with tweak tweak you can easily put it in there and yeah. Go from there. Cool. Oh, okay. Okay. Great. What I Thank thought you. about maybe we could we are thinking about maybe releasing the our data fetcher repository where we um, go around these weird um, Drupal placeholders you got in Tweak where you get entity and drill down with dump all the time. We've made a wrapper with Tweak filters. You just say data fetcher, put the field in and the system automatically gets the right data for you. We did something like this. This we're thinking about when we get reach a level where we say, yeah, this is properly done. We could maybe release this. My colleague did a lot of work on that. So because normally you have for media fields, you have a different method of getting the data out for text and you know the things in front end development, which makes it pretty hard sometimes to get the data and we made a a tweak filter to do this for us, the heavy lifting. So maybe we thought about doing this in the future. But yeah, this is work in progress currently. So um, yeah, what I've seen, uh, if I would have had this, let's say six, seven years ago, where we had more smaller scale projects, it would have been awesome because we would have been so fast to, to spin them up and we, to maintain this this little installations, these brochure sites. Now we are doing more bigger things where the projects are longer. This is not about the speed in general anymore. It's just about coding style more where Tailwind helps also, but for spinning up, it is not a big issue then um, to get it fast or quickly up and running. If you do a project for half a year, uh, you can take a few minutes more, but if you do smaller ones, it for sure helps you to have a quick start. Yep, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, thanks. That was great.